Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you this camera from Autumn Stack and the model is AC1. It's supposed to make your life a lot easier when you try to line up your laser engraving. I did try to use a few different cameras with light burn before. I didn't manage to get it working because there is so many different types of camera out there. Some of them are fish eye, some of them are webcam. I tried three or four of them, but none of them give me a very good result. Now this is sent to me by Autumn Stack, so I'm privileged to have a go at the latest product. If you are to buy this, uh, this is about £100 uh, in UK or $100 in uh, America. I need to figure out how to install this on my setup because I have a custom enclosure for my laser. Once you open the box, you are greeted by a instruction booklet. Ah, it does look familiar. Uh, for those people who tried uh, to use a camera in light burn before, this is a uh, calibration card. You, you use it to set up the camera, which I will show you guys um, how I'm going to do that um, in a minute. It's good that they have instruction because although light burn gives you instruction and there's tons of video online, I still didn't manage to get it set up. Um, you got the pole mount which is what I meant when I say it, uh, the majority of the length of the box is because of the mount. Uh, metal constructions, metal constructions on the plate as well. So this is quite heavy duty. We got a tape measure and you got a ball mount. Uh, this one gives you a bit of adjustment of the angle and the camera itself. And of course you need the clamp. You clamp onto the machine itself or you clamp onto an enclosure. Autumn Stack Maker. Um, this one is a metal enclosure. And you've got like a webcam kind of a lens in the front. It's flush, so there's no uh, sticking out lens. You've got a, uh, I think this is a 1 over 4 uh, threaded mount. A link of USB A cable that you can plug onto your computer, I guess. So here is my Pandora box. The machine, um, my X20 Pro is actually inside the box itself. So I can't clamp onto the back of the laser. I can only clamp onto the back of the box. But as you can see, this is quite flat at the moment. So there's nothing to clamp onto. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a piece of wood timber here. And then so that I can clamp onto it. But that means that my distance the pole from, from here to there will be offset by a bit because the machine is actually further front. I need to add a piece of timber right here. Obviously hot glue itself is not enough to hold it in place. I'm only using the hot glue so that I can free my hands to screw this on. I'm not sure if two screws is enough but Yeah, that should do. So now we can assemble the parts together. Okay, so there's one knob for the vertical, one knob for the uh, horizontal. And that hooks onto the clamp. Okay, so I got the L shape now. Okay, so this is similar to, you know, most of the clamps for your table lights. <laughs> Not the easiest thing to do, but it can be done. I just want to make sure it's dead center. Okay, so I'm glad that it kind of um, go over the exhaust, but saying that if I need to lower it, I can only lower it up to there before I have to go underneath the exhaust. So I turn the box back into facing forward. Now I have the mount at the back of the box with this pole sticking out with the camera in the front. The camera is attached to the ball joint and then I added an extra ball joint here because I've been mounting this at the back of the box just in case they don't give me enough length so the extra ball joint kind of push it back forward a little bit so hopefully this will even out um, the cable length is okay generous but if your computer is not not near your uh, laser printer then you might have to get a longer cable i think i'm okay but i wouldn't like my cable to be pulling on the camera because even a slight uh, movement uh, adjustment it, you need to recalibrate it again every time the camera moves or your bed moves or your machine moves 
Um, obviously not the box because the box is attached to that's fine but if you, anything else move then you have to calibrate it again clearly my lid can be removed like that or the lid will get into the way okay I do apologize if it is a bit noisy even though I have a lav mic on my neck but you know the fan and the pump air assist everything adds up I plug in the camera into my computer uh, a spare USB port and um, it's plug and play, it just install itself. So I start up the default uh, camera program on my computer and this is what it's showing at the moment. Quite clear image, I can't tell what's the resolution. I'm going to um, lift up the camera a little bit. Okay, so now I can, the camera managed to see uh, all the cutting area to make sure that the distance from the camera to the cutting material is 420 mil. I don't know how precise it needs to be, but this is where I want the camera to be, and I'm gonna tighten it. Not sure how accurate I can get it to be, but the longer you spend setting this up correctly, the less headache you will have with misalignment and all that later on. Click camera control in the window drop down. So now it's showing me the uh, the bed. Yeah, this is where I sometimes goes wrong with my previous camera. So this time the Atom Stack used standard lens. Non do full calibration. Next, you got a uh, dot card, which is you don't need to print it because you already got one. Click finish. Okay, so is it done? All right, so let's turn the light back on. Now we say remove this card. So now we remove this card. Camera alignment. 
Okay, the next bit, uh, they want to uh, burn something like a calibration mark on the paper. Now, I don't have paper, but I have this piece of uh, metal which I painted white. And this is bigger than 300 by 300, so I'm going to put it in the middle like here. So basically what Lightburn is doing is, is um, burning a reference image. Now Lightburn asked me to move the uh, laser head out of the window. And then we press capture image. So now Lightburn showed me a picture of the reference board. Now it's asking me to click Marco 1. So I will need to click on the middle of the target. Which is there. And then now go to number two. So double click on the center of the marker, number three. Hopefully it's calibrated. And now I'm going to click update again. Now I can see my cross mark right here. X. And I will make it just the right size for that. So let's make it a bit smaller. All right, so I think I can adjust that a little bit more. So moment of truth and see if my calibration and everything works. Not bad. Is it exact? Mm, I still got a bit of a pen mark here, so I probably out of focus by maybe a two millimeters. Okay, so let me demonstrate why I w want the camera to work so badly. Um, a lot of the time we try to um, use up as much material as I have, and you will have a hard time adjusting where the laser go. You have to like keep on framing and framing just to make sure you go into the right place not anymore with the camera all i need to do is go and click on the camera so now i can see the um, workpiece over here let's say i want to cut a letter out here let's say i want the letter b okay and i want it right at the edge here so i don't waste any material I can pick it closer to the edge, but you know, let's, let's not push our luck right there, right? Let's say I want to use that space there for the B. And now go to cut layers and change that to cut. Now it is going to get a bit smoky because I'm not having my lid on to show you guys. That's why I'm only cutting a small piece. So you can see it cuts where I want it to cut and that was showing on the picture which is pretty pretty close. So there you have it, autumn stack camera with a PC to allow you to uh, see where you're burning your material thank you very much for watching can't wait to see you next time with more interesting gadget bye bye